today I'm so excited because we are going to Hawaii. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I have a two week trip planned and we are just staying on Oahu. So we are literally gonna eat everything. Last time I visited, it was over three years ago. And I spent all this time researching and making my itinerary, but there were so many things on the list that I wasn't able to hit up in three days. So this time we're going to go to all those spots that I missed out on, as well as show you guys some of my favorites. But whenever I go on a trip, I get super sad that I'm leaving my comfy and cozy Helix sleep mattress. I've literally been getting some of the best sleep of my life ever since I switched over to Helix earlier this year. I wake up feeling so well rested and refreshed every morning, and it's because their premium mattresses are customized to fit your needs. I love how Helix knows that everyone is different, so they have a sleep quiz to make sure that you're getting the perfect mattress for you. Even if you sleep with a partner, it takes into account both of your sleep habits, sleep preferences, and body types, which is super nice because Bird and I sleep very differently. He moves around so much, like he's all over the place, but me, I kind of sleep like a log. Like I'm pretty still for the most part. So Bird and I took the sleep quiz together and we got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux mattress. I like how ours is the perfect balance between firm and soft, while also being comfortable and supportive. It's also really convenient that they deliver right to your door for free in the US. The mattress comes rolled up and is super easy to set up, not to mention so satisfying to watch it inflate. There's even a 100 night sleep trial to test the mattress out and make sure that you love it. And if you don't, they'll literally pick it up and give you a full refund. So make sure to check out helixsleep.com slash for up to $200 off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. Thank you to Helix for sponsoring and let's go to Hawaii. So we're here at Helena's Hawaiian food and I actually really wanted to try this last time but I didn't get the chance so I'm really excited to try it today. And we ordered like a whole spread of stuff. First, we're gonna start off with these short ribs. You can see on the inside that there's some juicy fattiness running through it. And the outside actually has kind of a little bit of like a crisp. It's like so simple, but so good. You gotta clean the bones like this. If you're not cleaning your bones like this, you're doing it wrong. Next, we have the long rice chicken. It looks like some kind of noodle with little bits of chicken inside. It's nice how the rice noodles have this kind of thick texture. And then you get the bits of chicken. There's like a little bit of broth in there as well. It actually kind of has like a ginger flavor, but it's not super strong. This kind of reminds me of just like a chicken noodle soup type of thing. Here we have the Kahlua pork. Gotta get a bite with rice. Mmm, mmm, that's so flavorful. It has such nice, rich pork flavor. Really, really juicy. So I was told that this is called chili pepper water, which sounds really interesting, and to put it on the Kahlua pork. I don't know if I put too much. Mmm. <laughs> Wow, that chili pepper water is really good. <laughs> it just adds like a hint of spice, kind of like habanero-y. You guys need to add the chili pepper water. It's so good. Here we have the fried butterfish. It looks so crispy and perfect. And they gave us this gravy to dip it in. Apparently it tastes kind of like a beef stew. Mm, mm, mm. It has this really nice light crisp on the outside. And the inside of the fish is so incredibly moist. Just look at that. Like it's not dry at all. Mm. So they also include this halpia dessert, which is like a coconut pudding. Look at that jiggle. Mm, very smooth, creamy, coconutty. Has a sweetness, but it's not super, super sweet or overpowering. Mm. Okay, so after trying everything, definitely get the ribs, the short ribs, the Kahlua pork. That was also one of my favorites. And you have to add this, the chili water or chili pepper water. This was full when we first started and look look how much we used. So definitely, definitely have to get this. Fish was also really good. Everything was pretty good, but those are my tops. Okay, so we just went to Uncle Clay's and this is Michael's personal favorite. So I got a regular size guava, mango, and a lily koi. I topped it off with some vanilla ice cream and I also added on these little mochis. They look really interesting because they actually are kind of like a greenish tint. So I wonder if they have some kind of flavor. Mm. Mm. It's very refreshing. The ice is really nice and fine. The way that the ice cream pairs with the ice, it makes it nice and creamy and also adds sweetness as well. It's a perfect pair. Mm. Let me try one of these little mochis. 
Mmm. Mochi is nice and chewy. It kind of reminds me of like a tongren, those glutinous rice balls. It doesn't have a flavor even though it's like kind of a green tint. It's really hot right now, so this is literally hitting the spot. So we just went to Sun Tea Mix and I got this watermelon smoothie which comes with crystal boba and cheese foam on top. Of course, we have to use our Feed Me Glass Boba Straw. Link will be in the description. Mm, that is so refreshing. This place specifically uses only fresh fruits, so you can definitely taste it. I actually really like the different textures of the crystal boba because it adds the crunchiness. Super refreshing. And then you got the cheese foam, which adds this nice creaminess to it as well. And then we also earlier stopped by Leonard's Bakery, and I've been dying to try this place. First, I got to try the original. Mm, mm. This one is really nice because it has that dusting of sugar. So it's really sweet at first and then the dough is nice and fluffy. Like just look at the way the dough just springs back like that. Next up we have the guava filling. Mm. Mm. Look at that filling. Oh, 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 it's dripping. Oh, oh, oh. I'm making such a mess, but it's so worth it. Surprisingly in this, the guava flavor is not super, super strong. Like it's kind of subtle, but it's still definitely there. Next up, this is the halpia, which is like coconut. Mm. It's still nice and warm inside and it has that really nice coconut flavor which goes really well with the malasada I actually think I prefer this one to the guava one surprisingly I thought I would like the guava one the best but I actually really like this healthy one last but not least we have the pumpkin This is their seasonal flavor Look how bright orange that filling is. Definitely has a pumpkin flavor there. It has a little bit of like the pumpkin spiciness to it, but honestly, not sure how I feel about this one. I think out of all the ones I tried, I'd rank it last place. And I really like the original the Halpia the best. Okay, so we are at Thrills and the owners, Sandy and Ridge, actually let us go in the back and like try swirling it ourselves, which honestly, all those years swirling my own ice cream at Sweet Tomatoes, I feel like prepared me for this moment. Uh -oh, uh -oh. oh wow, looking good. No. <laughs> not, actually not bad. No, 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 no. <laughs> This one is their ube flavor, and I knew I had to try it because you guys know I love ube, so. Mmm. Wow. The ube flavor is so strong. The texture is really nice and creamy, and when you get the little crunch of the fruity pebbles, it's so perfect. Mm. They also have this one, which I've never seen before. They have ice cream, and then they put creme brulee on top, and they torch it. So let's go ahead and break this up. Oh, I'm so excited. That creme brulee is so custardy and creamy. And then I really love that texture of the torch sugar. And it adds this nice kind of like burnt flavor. Mm. Wow, this is really unique and really good. Here we also have their melon milk soft serve. Mm. This really does remind me of like Malona bars or like a honeydew milk tea. And I can't get over this texture. Just look at that. Mwah. It's so nice.
Okay, so for our first stop of the day, we are at Yogurt Story. And this place, let me tell you guys, has been on my list for so long. You guys know I'm obsessed with ube, and they are really well known for their ube pancakes. Look how purple this is, and they're steaming hot. They look so fluffy. They're so light and fluffy and airy, and they also have like a bit of a chew to it. Almost not really like a mochi pancake, but a kind of similar-ish because it has like a chew to it. That ube sauce on top just makes it so much more flavorful. It adds so much ube flavor, but also like a hint of coconut, which is really nice. Mm. Mm. We also had to order their Hawaiian loco moco. It's basically just homemade burger patties over rice and with some gravy and then topped with two eggs. Okay, let's pop this yolk. Ooh. Wow. Oh my God, it's like lava flowing down. I love a runny yolk. We got the perfect bite. Oh, my egg. <laughs> Their gravy is so flavorful. Wow. I've actually eaten a good amount of Logo Mocos, and sometimes the gravy is like pretty bland. So overall, the dish is pretty bland, but this one is pretty solid. It's so like rich and luscious. Then you got the richness from the egg yolk as well. The burger patty is actually really flavorful. And then of course, the white rice just balances it all out. Last but not least, we have the fat pig fried rice. And look, they even include some like fried pork skins. They look so crispy. Let's give it a mix. The crunch from the chicharrones mm. is so nice. Usually you don't get that kind of texture when you eat fried rice, you know? It complements it really well. There's a lot of flavor in here. It's very like savory and umami. You got that flavor of the bacon as well. Mm. <laughs> Okay, hopefully the music's not too loud and you guys can hear me, but we are at Hana Tea, and a lot of you guys always recommend this place to me, so I'm very excited to check this out. Of course, I gotta use my Female Me Lost Boba Straw. Link will be in the description as always. So this is the brown sugar milk tea with brown sugar boba, and I got it 75% sweet because I was worried that adding the brown sugar boba would make it like really sweet. Hmm. Immediately, my thoughts are <laughs> that the boba is a very weird texture like it's not chewy and bouncy like it's chewy but not bouncy almost like a chewy and mushy kind of situation but it's nice because when you chew down on it you get the brown sugar flavor so you can tell that they definitely soaked it and cooked it in brown sugar but yeah the texture is just not quite there the milk tea itself is fine because it has a tea flavor a brown sugar flavor it's also a decent amount of creaminess the only thing is the boba just should be more bouncy i feel like it's kind of mushy but i'm here for two weeks so hopefully i can come back and try some of the other drinks So now we are at Ono Seafood, and this is one of the most popular and famous poke places. We got the shoyu ahi, the spicy ahi, and the Hawaiian style ahi. This one is the Hawaiian style ahi. Mmm. Oh my god. It literally melts in your mouth. Like so soft and buttery. All of it is marinated as well, so it's really, really infused with the flavor. Poke here is just incredible and can't be beat. Mm. This one is the spicy ahi. It's basically just like a spicy mayo type of situation. Mm. I can't get over the texture of the fish. It's just so buttery smooth. Like you barely have to chew at all. Even my grandma, who doesn't have teeth, can eat this. This one is very different. It's like creamy. There's also like masago in here. So you get the little texture of the fish roe. And it's actually not very spicy at all. Last but not least, we have the shoyu ahi. Look at how it glistens in the light. Oh my gosh. Wow. This one is definitely the most flavorful of them all. It has like this savory soy saucy flavor. I feel like out of all of them, the shoyu is probably my favorite because it has so much flavor. It's amazing. You guys have to come here. So now we are at Wyola Shave Ice. I have half guava, half lily koi. I added lily koi cream on top as well as condensed milk. Look at the texture of the ice. Oh my gosh. Mm. I love how their ice is so soft. Even though it's ice, it like doesn't have an icy texture. The flavor of the guava and the lily koi is really, really nice together. So, so refreshing. I got a crunch from the lily koi seeds. It's very tart, but it adds to the refreshingness. Oh, this is the perfect treat for this hot day. Ooh. I think one side is being brain freeze. Yeah, brain freeze.
Okay, so we are at Cinnamons and they are famous for their guava chiffon pancakes. We were deciding if we should get a two stack or a four stack. We decided on a four and now I think we should have gotten two because <laughs> look at this. That is a thick stack of pancakes, oh my gosh. Whoa, you get the flavor of the guava, but there's also this unexpected flavor of like very strong cream cheese flavor. Either cream cheese or like sour cream. These pancakes are hella thick. Look how thick that is. Kind of like a guava sour cream pancake. Cause you get that really strong flavor of like the sour cream. Next, we also got this Kahlua pork eggs Benedict. Look how beautiful this is. It has tater tots. Mm. It's so crispy. Oh my goodness. That's like one of the crispiest tater tots I've ever had. They almost have this like salt and peppery flavor to it. Like, you know, if you go to a Chinese restaurant and you order salt and pepper pork chop or something, it kind of has that seasoning. Because you can see here that they have diced onion, diced bell pepper, and it really feels like they seasoned it in a salt and pepper way. These are so addicting. I can't stop eating them. Oh my god, look how beautiful that egg is. Oh my gosh, on the inside, there's like this purple sweet potato. That sweet potato makes it so unique. First you get that layer of that kind of fluffy English muffin. Then you get the layer of the sweet potato, which is kind of starchy and adds like a sweetness. And then you have that savory umami Kahlua pork. And on top of that, you have that rich runny egg yolk with the hollandaise sauce. The Kahlua pork is so rich and flavorful. But really what's the star of the show is the tater tots, surprisingly. Penny's Malasadas, and I actually have not heard of this place. I'm with John and Mally, and they recommended this Malasadas place. So first up, we have the original Malasada. This one just has the Hawaiian white cane sugar. Mm. These are definitely more like airy and fluffy than Leonard's, and these have more of like a little crisp on the outside. It's nice and airy and fluffy, and it's also not too sweet. I feel like the dough itself doesn't have much sweetness to it. It's mostly the sugar coating, whereas the Leonard's is actually quite a bit sweeter than this. Next, let's try these ube cream malasadas. Oh my gosh, look at all that purple filling. Mm. This one is definitely sweeter than the original, probably because the filling is adding a lot more sugar to it. And the ube filling, I actually feel like it doesn't really taste like ube, which is surprising. The only thing that's ube about this is the purple color. Other than that, it's kind of just like a sweet cream, like a sweet custardy kind of filling. Next, we have the original custard filling malasada. Oh my gosh, the way that the filling just oozes out. Wow. Hmm. This custard one pretty much tastes like the ube cream one, but the ube one is purple. I feel like flavor-wise, it's very, very similar. Last but not least, I'm gonna try this Li Hing one. It actually has the Li Hing sugar on the outside and no filling on the inside. Whoa. That Li Hing flavor is strong. It's kind of like a salty, plummy kind of flavor. It's almost like this is like a beignet with Li Hing powder on the outside. This one is surprisingly good. I'm not even like a huge fan of Li Hing. I don't like it like that, but I feel like this might've been my favorite out of all of them. Okay, so now we are at Tonkatsu Ginza Byron. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. First up, we have their pork katsu sandwich. The bread looks so fluffy. Mm. Whoa. They put like a mustard in here, which gives it almost like a wasabi-ish flavor. Kind of has like a sourness to it as well. Ooh, I gotta be careful with that mustard because I'm getting that like wasabi nose effect. <laughs> Just look at how fluffy that bread is. Oh my gosh, it's so soft and pillowy. The pork is very meaty, although definitely could be juicier in this. It's like a little bit on the dry side. All right, so here we have the Kurabuta pork loin katsu. This one uses like more premium pork. And to go with it, they give us this little dish with sesame seeds. We're supposed to grind up the sesame seeds. Once it's grinded out, we add the katsu sauce. Give it a little mix. Now we grab a piece of the pork and we dip it. Mm, mm. So crispy and flaky. If you can see like those breadcrumbs, I was worried that it'd be too dry because it actually looked kind of dry, but it has some juiciness to it too, which is really nice. Next up, we have the specialty thick cut pork loin. Look at that. You can see like the fat running through it, which makes it look so juicy. Gonna give it a dip in the sauce. Mm. When they said thick cut, they really meant it. This is so thick. I also do think this one is juicier than the last piece. Oh, and that light crisp. The breading is just so light. It's not thick enough 
to be considered crunchy. It's more crispy and flaky. I think between this specialty thick cut pork loin versus the Kurobuta pork loin katsu, I prefer the specialty version because it definitely is juicier. There's actually two very well-known places for tonkatsu in Honolulu. One of them is this place, Ginza Byron, but there's also tonkatsu Tamafuji. So I'm really glad we're getting to try this place, but I also have a reservation for Tamafuji in a few days, so I'll let you guys know which one I like better. All right, so all of Friday, we went on a huge food tour, mostly in North Shore slash Halaiva area. We did a mini shrimp truck tour and it was so convenient because these three trucks were all walking distance from each other. I'm actually doing a whole separate shrimp truck video where I spend a day trying all the shrimp trucks and do a more in-depth review and rating. So definitely check that video out to find out which shrimp truck is the best. After eating so much shrimp, we took a quick shave ice break at Kaimana Shave Ice and I got the sunset, which is mango and strawberry syrup with ice cream and mochi. They make all their syrups with natural ingredients and their ice cream is made in-house. I liked how their shave ice was very light and refreshing and wasn't too sweet. We even saw these cute geckos while eating out on the patio. Look how beautiful and colorful they are! Then we headed over to Ray's Kiawe Burrow Chicken. Not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but dude, this place was so good. You can order a whole chicken for only $14. And the chicken is so flavorful and juicy, it's definitely a must try. Next, we went to Hala Iva number seven, which is a food truck serving up Japanese food. We ordered the spicy mizo tonkatsu and the poke bowl, and wow, even though this place doesn't specialize in poke specifically, their poke was one of the best I had on Oahu. As we were driving down the road, we spotted Kula Shave Ice, which is actually one of Michael's favorite shave ice places, so we had to stop. Apparently, they closed their old location and he didn't know that they opened up a new one, so it was an unexpected pleasant surprise. They also make all their syrups with natural and fresh fruits. I ordered the lili koi and guava with mochi, halpia cream, and coconut condensed milk. It was so good, perfectly light and refreshing, and I also loved the homemade mochi as well as the halpia cream. It was my favorite out of the shave ice places we tried that day. We also made a quick stop at the Waihole or or Waiahole Poi Factory. This place is known to have amazing Hawaiian food, but since we were already pretty full, we just got a dessert there called the Sweet Lady of Waiahole. It's halpia ice cream on top of warm kulolo, which is a dessert made from taro and coconut and has a chewy mochi-like texture. After all that eating, we finally drove back to Honolulu and stopped by Kyung Seafood. This is their small sashimi combination and look how much fish there is. And it was only $30. We also ordered their meat gen, which is kind of like a Korean pancake. It's thin, marinated slices of beef dipped in an egg and flour batter and pan fried. It's served at Korean restaurants throughout Hawaii, but actually you can't really find it at restaurants outside of the islands. We got other dishes like short ribs, spicy ahi, chicken gizzard, and even though we were so full, this meal definitely hit the spot and was a perfect way to end the day. Comment below your favorite food from this Hawaii food tour part one and here's a little preview of what you can expect for part two so if you're excited for that make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you in part two bye